Hey, what's up? This is Advanced Warfare here. Crocs have typically been known as the ultimate what are those shoe. They're designed purely for practicality and wearability, and maybe not so much style. You'll find these more associated with service staff and healthcare workers who need something cheap, comfortable, uh, that can wipe clean, people who maybe don't care so much what they look like, or pretty much anyone who's just going out to take the bins out or doing some other kind of quick outdoor task where uh, water resistance and a shoe that goes on pretty quickly is the main benefit. Over the last year or so, with comfort and style never being closer together, the popularity of Crocs from a fashion perspective has exploded. Not only have we seen numerous celebrity appearances, uh, an increase in collabs, which is something that has been going on for the last couple of years now, and the rise in the Y2K aesthetic has collectively led to a 64% increase in sales of Crocs over Q1 2021. But I'm not sold on the look of the croc personally, I just can't shake that previous non-fashion image. So for that reason, I wanted to come up with a bit of a list of alternatives which still fit into this mock clog sandal kind of hybrid thing that the croc is doing, but in a more interesting or a more aesthetically pleasing package. After all, a comfy, easy to put on, water resistant, breathable shoe sounds right up my street in theory. So let's take a look at some of my favorite alternatives to croc energy shoes at a variety of price points that you could look at this summer. We might as well get it out of the way first. The Yeezy Foam Runner is the premier high fashion answer to the croc with a kind of similar shape, but a far more complex and organic looking design made from this algae derived foam. So props to Kanye for going down the more sustainable production kind of route with these. Colorways tend to drop one at a time, which limits their availability in typical Yeezy style. So although these do retail for $80, good luck actually finding them for that. We're looking at recent sales of $300 and up on these things. More art on the way though, of course. Next up, we're looking at this not exactly subtle vermilion color, uh, which is dropping in October. Red October, get it. Very much a contrast to the more neutral colors that have dropped so far. But either way, that silhouette is incredibly distinctive. People are gonna be able to spot these from a mile away. So definitely one for the flex enthusiasts. Perhaps a more sober alternative to these, which still have some of that Yeezy foam runner look, is the Merrill Hydro Mark. These come in at $65, not an unreasonable price, and have far greater availability than the Yeezys do, even though they have seen quite a lot of recent popularity, and um, more and more they're being stocked on fashion retailers instead of just outdoor hiking gear kind of places. A couple of marbled color options, again, bring some similarity with the Yeezys there, with the white and black and the black and white versions respectively, both feeling like kind of wearable options that still could be worn in a fashion context for sure. The spoon-shaped nose is a little bit weird looking. It's got a bit of that jester foot aesthetic, but overall, I think these are a pretty good contender for something which definitely has the croc spirit, but in a slightly reworked and more interesting package. Since often there's a bit of a practical dimension for these kinds of shoes, outdoor and hiking gear brands are ones to look to, and Hoka One On It are a great example with the Hoppera sandal. At this point, it's basically just a walking shoe with some cutouts, clearly a more technical design, um, and yeah, more heavy duty appearance for sure, and it loses some of that easy slip on kind of appeal, but you're gaining far greater suitability for all day wear and treacherous conditions, and they just look a lot more substantial. But the Hoppera is a pretty cool looking option, I think. It's clearly got that technical aesthetic which is popular in footwear at the moment, but bringing that to a more summer ready kind of idea, and it's gonna be a lot better ventilated than your average hiking shoe, that's for sure. Although these are one of the more expensive options here, they do come in less than many of the brands are offering, so it's a good way to experiment with this style and get involved with Hoka One One for a little bit less money. If you are thinking that's a bit too much though, or maybe you're not quite sold on this highly technical aesthetic, they do have a pair of slides as well which come in far cheaper and are all EVA foam, so it's got that single material kind of thing again. The lack of back that you'd associate with a croc or a clog does limit their wearability a little bit because these are just going to flip off if you try and do anything too over the top, but they're another potential option there for sure. You probably wouldn't expect a skate brand shoe to work in this kind of style, but Vans are here to prove you wrong with the Vrocks. 
or the Trek slip-on as they're officially known. These are based of course on the iconic slip-on but updated in a all rubber material with some vents at the top there. Perfect for your everyday kind of adventuring stuff whilst also because of the material used being very easy to squash up in a bag and take anywhere with you at a moment's notice. Again low prices with these retailing at $55. The only problem is that these have been incredibly popular and currently are totally sold out. That really does prove the demand for fashion conscious iterations of the croc style shoe if nothing else. But it seems like a natural extension of the van slip on which already was a shoe that fits that kind of role of being super easy to chuck on and wear for short periods doing whatever. So makes sense to have a waterproof version of that and something that you can crush up and take with you on your little beach adventures or camping trips or stuff like that. I can easily see these being worn with a pair of board shorts, nice baggy t-shirt, just vibing, you know? Hopefully we'll get a restock on those. But Vans are far from the only sneaker brand entering this kind of look. New Balance recently did a collab with Kale, which is a Korean outdoor gear brand, and the CRV slip here is the result. These are a little bit more substantial and a bit more technical looking than your average croc. That's primarily due to the zip down the front, which undoes to reveal a lacing system underneath. So this is definitely one for more substantial all day wear, when you need a little bit more support than the croc is going to offer. These are really going to fit that space of lightweight summer hiking gear that just look that little bit better than more practical hiking sandals. But they still retain that kind of technical element to them. I think the grid pattern goes a long way there and they could certainly be styled in a more futuristic way if you so chose. And it certainly does make them look a little more eye-catching than an all-black variant as well. On a similar note, Salomon have the RX Mock line. They take that sock shoe aesthetic kind of approach, so more form-fitting than a lot of the other shoes here and definitely more designed for intensive and longer term wear too. As a result that does mean they're a little bit more expensive but you're going to get something that's a little bit more supportive as a result. These do also have a collapsible back so still great for sticking your foot in there real quick if you need to but then you can put these on properly if you do need that little bit of extra support. High fashion brands have also taken note of this style. My favorite by far is the Alix Mono Slip-On. Like the Yeezy Foam Runner, this definitely takes a more futuristic approach to the single material shoe. Although in this case, a far more aggressive and more angular design with these sweeping lines coming up the toe box here. It's a far sleeker and a more futuristic, more refined, and uh, I think more premium looking take on this style, particularly with those monochrome colors that they use. While they do come at a cost, these retail at just under $200. That's still relatively cheap for a piece of Alix clothing and as a result these are fairly close to selling out. I don't think any retailer still has a full size run. If you want something that's a little bit fancier though, Luisa Villaroma are currently doing pre-orders on a new black gloss version of these so you can be extra fancy and shiny with your more premium croc. Another luxury version are the Givenchy marshmallow slides and sandals. These have something of the foam runner DNA as well. You've got that super thick midsole and that strap that goes over the top is real chunky looking. It looks a little bit in fact like the Yeezy slide. Unfortunately, these are even more expensive at over $300 retail, but the more options that we have for this style of shoe, the better, and it's only gonna encourage more brands to uh, get on and do the same thing. And the slides come in this really nice olive color as well, so that gets a point for me. And as a final thought before we round off, Crocs themselves have, of course, through their own collaborations, been putting fashion more to the forefront of their designs. And there were two that came out last year that particularly caught my eye. First is a second collab with Japanese retailer Beams, and they came out with a little capsule collection of hiking-inspired Crocs, which means cargo pockets attached, all kinds of other little fun references to hiking and outdoor life. And they also came in a really nice selection of colors as well. Second in a related collab was upcycling extraordinaire and now Arc'teryx brand ambassador, Nicole McLaughlin, bringing quite literally the campsite to the Crocs. These are covered in all kinds of fun little things and different elements of camping culture from uh, extra laces 
to a little detachable compass, to, yep, even a flashing light on there. So you've pretty much got everything you need for your camping adventure right there on your feet. I like things like this that don't take themselves too seriously and just by doing something different really invite some exploration and a bit of a closer look at these. Unfortunately, these collabs were both from last year now, so probably not too easy to find, but it was something that I wanted to point out anyway, just to show that Crocs are kind of aware of this space and they are doing more and more there. And no doubt we're only gonna be seeing more interesting Crocs collabs going forward. Will they top the KFC version though? That remains to be seen. And that was my Croc alternative selection. And let me know if you had a particular favorite in there. I think if I was gonna go for one of these, I would go for either the Hoke One One ones or maybe the Alix ones as well. They're kind of two opposites of the spectrum, I feel, with one being very sleek, refined, futuristic, one being much more kind of practical and over-engineered almost. But let me know what you think. Are you pro Croc or do you totally hate all of them? Oh, and if you guys enjoyed this video, definitely keen on doing a how to style Croc type shoes. So uh, yeah, maybe that one's on the cards as well. And please do give it a like because it is super appreciated. And thank you very much for watching the video. We will be back next week with another one. Shout out to Goon for weighing in on the vertical zip on the acronym 301. He actually did a great video on the same bag in a different fabric um, a couple of months back now. So if you're hungry for more 3A info, then definitely go check that one out. And shout out to Best or Verse. I didn't really talk about styling, to be honest, but I think that's another great benefit of the 3A1 is that, yeah, you can dress it up with this crazy over-the-top technical outfit if you want to, but equally, this kind of thing, because it is quite an interesting design at the end of the day, you can wear it in a very simple way. It summer appropriate and it still looks good thanks for making it all the way to the end of the video if you want to catch some more there's going to be links going up at the top and if you haven't subscribed yet then definitely consider doing so because we've got loads more cool videos whether they be croc related or not and uh, yeah sorry if you didn't like the croc video i guess you can you can dislike it if you hate crocs and you never want to see it ever again but uh, yeah that's everything so i'm out